Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to the first in what I hope is a series of videos to um, share a little bit about uh, why I think Emacs is such an awesome editor and um, environment to work in. Uh, I've been using Emacs for a long time. I use it for uh, code development, uh, document preparation, email, uh, you name it, uh, scheduling, calendaring. Uh, it's really terrific, but um, it does take a while to really learn how to make it work the way you want it to work. So I'm putting together a series of videos and matching blog posts and GitHub repositories uh, to show you kind of like um, how you can go from that the very basics uh, into setting it up the way you like it. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, Today, this video is just going to go over some boilerplate. My assumption is that you have Emacs installed and that you've at least gone through the tutorial. And um, if you haven't, you can check out the matching blog post. That'll have some links to help you get started. Um, and we'll just do some basic configurations. I won't explain everything today. It's just to get us going. Um, on the blog post, we'll also have a list of the topics that I'm planning on covering and um, we'll get more into depth and explain everything moving along. So right over here we're in my home directory and you'll see um, well, it's not really my home directory but it's set up to look like it and there's nothing there. So when you load Emacs for the first time it's going to look something like this and uh, you can click here to get to the tutorial. Ultimately, you're not going to be doing a lot of clicking because you're going to be so much more efficient and um, uh, just working with the keyboard. But for now, that's a nice way to go. One thing that I will show, I'll just make the window a little bigger, is uh, to make the font bigger, you can do Control X and then just hit plus a few times or minus a few times to change the font size. And I'll just do that to make it easier to see everything. So. Okay, so we've just uh, loaded Emacs, uh, we're just exiting from Emacs, and you'll notice that if I do ls-a, which lists all the files in my directory, in that directory, there's now a .emacsd directory. Um, <clears throat> if I just typed ls, it didn't appear because it's a hidden directory. Um, Emacs, when it loads up, uh, can get a configuration from lots of places. Uh, one place is a hidden file um, called .emacs in your home directory. But what I like doing is going into the .emacsd directory and creating a file called init.el. And that's going to be where we put our configuration. So let's, again, move this up a little bit. Let's um, make the font a little bigger. And um, so if you went through the tutorial, and if you haven't, you really should, Control x one just uh, makes this one window, gets rid of that other startup window. And we're in init.l, which is our configuration file. And our configuration is just an ELISP file. It's a program. Uh, Emacs uses ELISP as its language. And um, so let's put in a couple of things. I'll explain these in future videos, but this is just to get us started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put set queue inhibit startup message T. Uh, this is going to basically say um, inhibit the startup message. We won't get that startup screen uh, every time. You'll just get a blank screen or if you're editing a file, you'll get the file you're editing. The other thing we're going to set up is um, the Emacs package manager. Emacs has tons of packages. If I come over here to the web browser and we go to melpa.org, these are yeah, uh, yeah. Well, these are Emacs packages. So you'll see there's 2048. Well, let's go by by the number of downloads. Um, so these are the most downloaded package. So, so um, there's a Git interface, uh, fly check for syntax checking, autocomplete, project management, uh, all sorts of stuff. And um, there are other places. Uh, this is Melpa. There are other repositories, but I like using Melpa. And uh, here's what we'd have to type in to set everything up. So the first thing is, well, let me just get this all in, then we'll do some explaining. Notice that um, Emacs, even without any configuration, it's doing uh, the fonts for us. It's doing the coloring of, um, of the keywords. It'll also do indentation, as we'll see. checking the parens for us. 
and um, and that's it. So let's save this, and um, let's exit. And if we come back to here, we'll see that we now have our in our dot emacsd. We've got init.l. That's the file we created. Let's go back into emacs. And make the font bigger again. And let's list packages. And so here we'll see there are a lot of packages. Uh, but these are just the built-in packages. There's not a whole lot here. So let's just do escape x package refresh. On the bottom you might see it saying contact Melpa. We'll wait a little bit here. So here it's uh, going out onto the internet to uh, download the package list. Taking a little bit longer than I'd like. Um, we were having some connectivity issues from here yesterday. I hope that uh, resolved itself. Um, if not, we're going to have some issues here. So I'm going to, let's try this again. I'm going to do control G to break out of this. Let's do package refresh again. Contacting Melpa, not so good. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, it's, it's there, so. Let's make sure I typed everything in correctly. Let's, uh, let's quit this. Let's go back to, let's ah, quit. Melpa, H-E-T-P-S, colon, slash, slash, melpa.org. Packages, that looks like it's all spelled correctly. Oh, so now it's done. So let's go back to the packages. And you'll notice here now we have all these Melpa packages. Tons of Melpa packages. Let me make the font smaller. Lots of packages that we can play with. Okay, so that's great. Now, there's one particular package that I really like, which is called Use Package, that's going to make it easy to install other packages. So let's just put in the code for that. So, um, save that. Now we could just exit Emacs and reload it, but if I just type in up oh, wrong key, control X, control E, that's going to run that last ELISP command. Um, notice that it put in some automatic variables here. Uh, we can just leave them. We could we could get rid of them if we wanted. But um eh, we'll get rid of them for now. May may, re may recreate this later on. But now and notice I've saved Yep, everything is good there. And so now we've installed use package and we're gonna use one other, we're gonna use use package now to install a package. And we're going to install the package um, try. And we're gonna say ensure T, again, I'll explain all of these in future videos. Uh, this is just to get us started. Try is a really awesome package that lets us try packages. Um, so I just ran that and now we've got this thing called try and it's installed. So I can try out a package or I can exit Emacs and come back into it. Try, you know, that works, and so you see it's asking for a package. But what try lets us do, it lets us try out a package. So let's say I don't want to install a package for real, but I want to try out 2048. So now I'm trying it, so I can run 2048, and I get all this 2048 goodness here. Everything is, you know, it's all working, terrific. Uh, okay, but when I exit Emacs and I come back in, this all a little bit bigger. Twenty forty eight isn't there. I can't tab complete it. So that's a try is really, really useful. Now the last package I want to show you for today is something called Witch Key, um, which is going to be really helpful in just um, navigating Emacs. So Emacs has all these special keys. So we save our file with Control X, Control S. 
but if you just type control X and you don't remember what comes after it, you're kind of in a bind here. Well, which key helps you um, with that? So type control G to get out of the middle of the command and we're going to use package which key and before we finish this let's just do a search for well we'll do a search on Melpa which key come here look at its home page and there's a lot of configuration you can do you can look on here and see all the details but we're just going to do the basics so which key will install that we're going to ensure it's installed and what we're also going to do is we're going to configure this after it's been installed by setting up which key mode. And again, I'll, this will all be explained later on, but this is just to get us started. So let's save our file. Let us execute this command so that which key is now installed. And now when I type control X, if we wait a few seconds, notice it brings us up some help on the bottom of the screen. All right, so this is our boilerplate. I'm going to save and exit Emacs here. Um, I'll put this directory, .emacs-d, so basically init.l up on GitHub. Um, we'll have a blog post with some matching stuff. Uh, the next few videos we're going to um, learn a little bit about some of the Emacs packages and navigation and all sorts of really cool stuff. And um, please, uh, if you want me to explore something or have any suggestions, leave them in the comments, either on the video or on the blog, um, you know, or just say hi. And again, I hope you're going to get some value out of this. Okay, bye-bye.